Hey everyone, Two Angry Frogs here, and today we're going to show you the basics of how to use weak orbs. I've had many subscribers ask about my user interface and how I get particular things on my WoW display, especially when it comes to class ability info. That's where weak auras come in. So what are weak auras, and how do you get them, and how do you use them? How do you modify them to get the look and feel that you want? That is what we will show you in this video. We'll cover how to install weak auras, how to find and import them, and some basic customization that you can do to get them set up the way you like. But before we begin, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you always know what we're up to next. Now, let's get into it. At their most basic, weak auras are a framework to add custom WoW user interface elements for almost anything you can imagine. You can think of it in terms of building blocks to add visual trackers and indicators to your display like symbols, shapes, icons, progress bars, and other things. And then you tie actions to those building blocks, such as attaching a timer to a progress bar, adding a countdown to an icon, or tracking a true or false condition. About the only thing you cannot do with a weak aura is automate any gameplay, which is against the terms of service anyway. So to use Weak Auras at minimum, you need to install the Weak Auras add-on. If you use CurseForge for your add-on management, simply search for Weak Auras in the search bar and it'll be the first add-on in the list. With over 190 million downloads, it is a very popular add-on to say the least. Note that if you're logged into WoW when you download the Weak Auras add-on, you can perform a slash reload to finish the Weak Aura install. There is no need to log out of the game. Although not required, you can also install the Weak Ores Companion app, which you can get at the following address. I use this and it does make it easy to determine if you have Weak Ores that need to be updated. It will show all Weak Ores you have installed and indicate if any have updates that need to be installed in game. So now that we have the add-in installed, how do we see our Weak Ores in game? And where can we find new Weak Ores? You can get to the Weak Auras interface in one of two ways. First, when you install the Weak Auras add-on, it adds a mini-map icon that you can click to open the interface. Second, you can use the slash WA command in chat to open the interface as well if you prefer to hide the mini-map icon. To find Weak Auras, we'll go to the site wago.io, which has by far the largest collection of Weak Auras. You'll want to make sure that you look for Weak Auras under the World of Warcraft Weak Auras menu. You can see from the listings that we can get Weak Auras for classes, raid bosses, dungeons, professions, and just about anything else you can think of. So to get to the class Weak Auras, we simply click into the class that we are looking for, and you'll see a listing of all the Weak Auras available. Personally, my go-to for classes are either the ones created by Luxthos or Afnar. When we click into the Luxthos Warlock Weak Aura, you'll see a Copy Import String button, and clicking this will copy the Weak Aura to your clipboard. Back in game in the Weak Aura's interface, click Import, Control V, paste the Weak Aura string from the clipboard, and hit the Import button. Once imported, you will see it in your list of Weak Auras on the left side of the window. Most Weak Auras are continually being updated. They may be updated for a new WoW expansion or patch, updates to classes that change the way a talent works, bug fixes in the weak aura itself, and so on. So you want to ensure that you keep your weak auras updated in game. As we mentioned earlier, you can do this through the companion app, which will show when any of your weak auras need updating. Another way you will be notified of updates is in the weak auras interface itself. When you open Weak Auras in game, any that need updating will be shown at the top with a WA icon indicating the Weak Aura has an update. Finally, you may also be notified in chat when you first log in of how many Weak Auras, if any, require updates. When you click the Weak Aura to update, you will be given multiple options pertaining to that update. The two most important are the size and position and custom configuration options. If you have made any changes to the installed weak aura as far as moving them, resizing them, rearranging the order of the individual auras, and so on, you'll want to make sure you uncheck these. If you do not uncheck these, the update will overwrite all of the customizations that you've made and put the weak aura back into a freshly installed state. 
If you have not made any changes, you can simply leave everything checked and perform the update. If you want to delete a weak aura, simply right click on the weak aura to be deleted and select Delete Children and Group. This will remove the entire weak aura. You can also choose to delete only parts of the weak aura. For this, click down into the weak aura to find the part you want to delete and delete it the same way. Note that unless you no longer want a weak aura entirely, it's typically better just to hide what you don't want to see as opposed to deleting it. And that we'll talk about in customizing weak auras. So let's go through some basic customization options. For this, we'll use the Luxthos Warlock Weak Aura since the class weak auras are the ones I've been asked about the most. Note that some of these customizations are unique to the weak auras that Luxthos creates, so you may not find this with all of them. When you first install the weak aura, this is what it looks like on your UI. In the Group tab, you can resize and move the weak aura where you like. I always resize and move at the top level parent group so it keeps all the different parts of the weak aura in place and on the same scale with each other. However, you can move lower level groups and individual elements if you choose. Next, if we click into the Custom Options tab, you'll see a ton of different configuration options for the weak aura. The one that I typically customize is the core icons. The core icons option sets how many icons are displayed in the main row of icons. This defaults to eight, and I typically set this to six, and these are in line with my main rotational abilities. Any other icons not shown in the core icons row are pushed to the top icons, as you can see here, and for me, these will typically be cooldowns since I don't need to watch for those as often as the main rotation abilities. You can customize the core and top icons as well and change the size, spacing, and so on. To move the icon order, we go into the core list in the weak aura. You can drag these up and down in the list and the order that you have them in corresponds to how they are displayed on your UI. For example, if I drag Summon Infernal before Havoc in the list, this is how it will be displayed on the UI. For myself, I tend to think in patterns, so I will typically order these in the same order as what is on my main action bar. Since from that standpoint, it all lines up with the action buttons to hit. You will notice that there are two rotational abilities missing, Incinerate and Chaos Bolt. These are not in the default Lux Those Weak Aura, so I duplicate and modify others to add these two spells. For Incinerate, honestly, there really is no reason to have a Weak Aura other than to get things lined up as I talked about before. So this is the only reason that I create this one. For Chaos Bolt, I want to keep an eye on whether I have enough Soul Shards, basically without having to look at my Soul Shards under the character portrait. If it's lit up, I know I can cast, and if it's desaturated, I know I need to build Soul Shards. So for Incinerate, I duplicate the Conflagrate Weak Aura. The only thing we need to do with this one afterwards is change Trigger 1 to Incinerate, delete the Trigger 2 Aura, and then change to Incinerate in the Load tab. And then I can move the Incinerate Weak Aura into the place that matches the Action Bar. The final thing I will do is get rid of the Glow. Under the Conditions tab, you can delete the Glow 1 Visibility condition, and that removes the glow around the icon. For the Chaos Bolt Weak Aura, I typically duplicate Havoc. This needs to be modified in four places. We'll change the spell to Chaos Bolt in Trigger 1, Trigger 2, and Trigger 3 under the Triggers tab. And then the last place to change this is under the Load tab, like we did with the Incinerate ability. Then as before, we can move the Chaos Bolt Weak Aura to whatever position we want in the core icons. That is pretty much all I modify for the Warlock Weak Aura. I'm good with where everything else is placed and what is shown, so I do not need to modify any of the other elements. One thing to note here is that the Incinerate and Chaos Bolt modified Weak Auras are deleted when this Weak Aura is updated. Since these are not part of the default Luxthos Weak Aura, they're not saved through unchecking custom configuration. If there is a way to save these customizations, definitely shout that out. With most weak auras, you can modify pretty much anything. When I really started diving into the Luxthos weak auras, I spent a lot of time resizing, moving, recoloring, 
looking at conditions and triggers, and so on. If I cannot figure out how to get some particular item back to the way it was, I just deleted the weak aura, imported it again, and then I could start with a fresh load. So experiment with how different weak auras work, since you can always go back to the beginning if you get stuck at some point. And this gives you a chance to really learn how a lot of these work and to be able to modify them for yourself. The last thing we'll cover is loading or displaying weak auras and unloading or not displaying them. You can do this with any individual weak aura, with groups or with the weak aura as a whole. For example, if I do not want backdraft to be displayed, I can go into the load tab and I can specify to never load. And in this case, that element will never be displayed. As we mentioned, you can also do this at the top level of the weak aura as well. For example, you'll notice that the weak aura displays when you are dragon riding, which makes things really messy when you're trying to watch your vigor display. For this, simply set it to load only when not dragon riding. And then the weak aura is hidden when you're in dragon riding form. And as soon as you dismount your dragon, then your weak aura shows up. We hope this quick intro helps you get started with using weak auras to help your gameplay. I know I found them very useful in focusing a lot of the information I need in a small space on the screen, so I'm not needing to look across different parts of the UI for related class ability information. So jump into these, dig around in the different things you can do with them, and just experiment. As always, let us know what you think down below in the comments, and everyone, have a great day.